Some of you may have been privy to the controversy surrounding the Extinction Engine this past week. If you've never heard of the Extinction Engine, it's a sort of quasi-mechanical, part-living construct, hewn from dark metals and hot gemstones, designed by a technocratic doomsday cult. Uh, its main function is to belch black exhaust fumes from the spine-like ridges on its back, blotting out the sun and choking all birds that are up there. Uh, it also exudes a black oil that sort of drips its way into the ocean and wipes out all life under the seas. Uh, it also, as a bonus feature, roams the land, uh, scouring the, uh, the surroundings for living things that it just sort of consumes in its gaping steel maw and turns their, uh, their bodies, essentially, into a sort of organic life paste that it uses to lubricate its wirings. And I just want to say, if Palmer Lucky wants to kick a few thousand dollars towards the maintenance of that thing, he can do what he likes, okay? It's not a lot of money. I mean, several thousand dollars is a lot of money, but he's very, very rich, so to him, it's not a lot of money. And let's not keep bringing up the photograph of him wearing the driftwood headpiece of the cult itself. He's under 25, give the kid a break, okay? So this game called Virginia came out last week. It's a game about a pair of FBI agents who are involved in a missing person case in a small town, while the protagonist is also investigating her partner as part of an internal affairs inquiry. I think. It's an odd duck, I'll give it that, and certainly not for everybody, especially as it falls under the whole interactive drama category of games, that contentious little genre that is most popularly referred to as the walking simulator. Limited interaction, linear storytelling, you know the type of thing. Personally, I think it's a pretty okay one, a fairly good game. It's not brilliant, I'm not going to rank it up there with the Stanley Parable or Firewatch, but it's pretty decent. It's certainly no fucking wonder. That's not what I'm here to talk about though, I'm here to talk about the outright hostility the game's gotten from a certain small subset of idiots, and I do stress certain small subset, before you go getting offended on behalf of said idiots and start writing your not all gamers comments, do keep in mind that if you're not guilty of the charges I'm bringing before the court, then this video isn't about you, so you don't need to get upset. If you do feel it's about you, well, then maybe you've actually been an idiot. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised to see people angrily declaring this game as part of the dreaded social justice agenda that has become such a melodramatic boogeyman over the last couple of years that I certainly can't take the term SJW seriously. Yeah, this game is the latest to be accused of pushing social justice aka left-leaning politics onto those their innocent gamers who just want to enjoy their non-political games like Deus Ex and Bioshock in peace. This is yet more SJW propaganda, writes one comment. Like Gone Home, it will flop. One particular commenter on Destructoid went total monkey balls in the comments for its review, making such highly informed comments as Virginia looks like your typical social justice bullshit that so many are trying to force on the gaming industry nowadays. <laughs> Here's the thing though, it's literally just a game that has a black woman as its lead. Other than that, it's a weird adventure game about a missing person with loads of symbolic oddity that has seen it compared to David Lynch's work, and that is Oh, no political browbeating, nothing about feminism or race or any of the other things that make some of the more sheltered among us feel uncomfortable. It's got a black woman in it. And if that's too political, too SJW for you, well, then there's a good chance you're the one with the problem here. Now, in the name of fairness, the backlash against Virginia has not been huge, if only for the fact it's not that well-known a game. It's got some positive buzz from various critics, and it enjoyed a highly favourable review from Polygon, as one might expect. But generally, few people are talking about the game, and most of those critical of it think it looks boring and just don't like those sorts of games in particular. Which is fine, of course. You're not politically, socially, morally, philosophically obligated to like a video game, and if a game's not ticking your boxes, it's not ticking your boxes. However, once you start accusing games of being things they're quite literally not, when you start seeing political agendas that are not there, the only conclusion one can reasonably draw is that you're the one doing the shoehorning, you're the one with an overwhelming political agenda that you can't keep control of. And if this is all sparked by a woman lead in a game, well maybe examine what it is you find so distasteful about women being allowed to be in a game. Or maybe it's just that you don't like the style of gameplay it features. Okay, 
Why not just fucking say that? Why does social justice come up? Why are you calling it propaganda or furiously mentioning Gone Home again? As if that game broke into your house and forced you to be gay. Seriously, even people who like that game are sick of hearing about it by now, surely. Like I said, the backlash against Virginia has been a storm in a teacup, but it's not the first time this nonsense has come up. You may or may not remember Her Story, a live action game about reviewing testimonial tapes from a woman involved in a murder case. Now that's a strange production about remembering key information and using that info to search for more videos and uncover the narrative. And to my utter disbelief, it was routinely written off as SJW bullshit by the same cluster of jesters who clearly hadn't played it and they were going off of only two bits of information. One, it's game Gameplay was unconventional, and two, it revolved around a female. And again, it didn't have social justice themes in it. It was a murder mystery. None of that scary feminism. No sp -p -p spooky LGBTQ talking points. Nobody trying to make you nightmarishly consider the value of a black person's life. It was a murder mystery. The accusations of it being a so-called SJW game were bloody unhinged and totally detached from reality. Then of course we have Life is Strange. Well, generally fondly regarded now, even by a lot of folk who may have not first taken to it. This Square Enix published adventure was sneered at as part of the SJW propaganda plot at first, and derided popularly as Tumblr the Game, simply because, again, its story featured women. One of them even had blue hair! The horror! Even if these games were talking loads about social justice issues, acting as if their existence infringes on your right to enjoy games, or is evidence of propaganda being forced on you against your will, is completely irrational. The obsession with Gone Home in particular has no foundation in the logic with a big L and reason with a big R that so many internet dwellers hold up as high ideals. It's years old, and almost every time I see it brought up these days it's from people who despise it and are still so very angry other people liked it. I don't even get that pissed off by games made by developers who are literally suing me, let alone some moderately successful walking sim. Why are you so scared of it? Anyway, the games I'm bringing up aren't talking loads about social social justice issues. They're just trying to be enjoyable products like any other, and they just so happen to not star Nathan Drake or his many, many subtle variants. They just so happen to not have guns in them. They just so happen to be a bit different, and a bit different is too fucking much for some people. Again, I must stress, for the many already predictably hammering their dislike buttons and typing out their offended Reddit comments, this has nothing to do with hating the games for things the games actually do, or disliking walking simulators and other unconventional genres for reasons of taste. I'm so so on walking sims myself. Some I enjoy, like The Beginner's Guide, some I loathe, like Dear Esther. And I can happily tell you why I feel the way I do about those games, and point to things those games actually do when I explain myself. Simply looking at a game for a few seconds and writing it off as propaganda or Tumblr the game is a gleefully ignorant non-criticism that has objectively been based in fuck all, and I wish you could know how indescribably stupid you end up looking when and those who play those games find none of the alleged propaganda because they were nowhere near as politically charged as you assumed based on your scant, psychologically warped evidence. And while we're here, I'd also like to point out that those who bravely fight for the status quo love yelling, go make your own game, stop trying to change the ones we already have, and then get really fucking vicious and infuriated when people do go and make those games. Surely it's better for SJW propaganda games, if we want to believe such things to be real, to exist as their own separate entities where you never have to play or even acknowledge them. To be pissed off at them even existing is to do exactly what you accuse the so-called SJWs of doing, demanding all games cater just to you and be exactly one thing. In short, games aren't infused with evil politics juice just because they have a woman or a person of colour in them. It's very unlikely that Microsoft is going to stop publishing Gears of War suddenly and start making only walking simulators just because Gone Home happened years ago, and you could stand to be cool for like a minute. Like a minute though. A reasonable video with a reasonable argument, if I do so so myself, and of course I do. So all that remains to be said is thank God for me, uh, enjoy your responses. Uh, I won't be around to read them because I have to go and conduct a social experiment that I'm working on where we take Palmer Lucky, uh, strip him of all his clothes, put him in a really big deep pit 
with no ropes, no ladders, no picks, no climbing gear of any kind, uh, and give him 24 hours to escape. Just so that in, in future, it won't be complete bollocks when he says that he worked his way up to the top from nothing. Thank God for me, and I'll see you later. He was homeschooled while I was homeless, the Tory cunt. <laughs>